I want to shift gears now to three more subjects. The first one is a vision. And I'm going to talk about the vision of GIS creating a smarter world. We hear a lot about smarter these days. What does it mean, the notion of wiring things up, being connected, being alive, our government agencies being smart? Actually, we all want to be smarter. And we all want our agencies to be smarter. So it's not far off in terms of a phrase that motivates all of us. Today, you and I are living in a world which is evolving rapidly, fueled in many ways by the underlying currents of a massive digital transformation. And from day to day, we're almost unconscious of it. But what's occurring is we're wiring it up. We're wiring up virtually everything that moves and changes, both at the thing level, but also synoptically with various kinds of measurements. This digital earth that is underway in its development uses lots of tools to access the information. And traditionally, it has been stovepiped. But, or and, location and mapping, and ultimately your field, GIS, is becoming essential to understand and to work with this massive amount of data. GIS is becoming a, a fundamental language of understanding. Understanding and also managing, providing not only detailed content, but because of geography, the science underneath it, also the context of how all of this content is interrelated. It's a powerful thought, content and context, and it's about everything. Today, we also are facing a dilemma of our world being challenged. It's increasingly challenged on almost every front, from population, environmental change, climate change, social conflict, worries about water resources or having enough, the loss of nature, the urbanization of our cities. All of this suggests that in many ways the, the arrows are going in the wrong direction. If we are going to have a positive and sustainable future, it's going to take all of your work, and particularly you I want to send this message to you who are building the geospatial infrastructure for our nation are going to have to do everything possible to not only turn this around, but also collaborate, just like David said. The success of DHS wasn't just an isolated thing. It was because people were collaborating. They were acting together to be able to achieve the distinguished work that they achieved. GIS itself, Many of you think of it as simply a technology. I think of it as a framework and a process. The process is six steps. It's about measuring and organizing data and integrating it, managing the data. How many of you here manage data? And then it's about visualizing and making maps, seeing it, seeing the patterns and relationships. How many of you make maps? Most of you. And then it's about analyzing the relationships between geographic phenomena, modeling, forecasting, predicting, understanding the impacts of change. And then fourth, it's about doing planning, supporting policy people, supporting decision-making, and moving in the decision-making and finally action direction. So if you thought about this as a, a virtuous cycle that all of you are doing on little postage stamps of the planet or sometimes whole country, this is an amazing thing that's occurring. It's about science, integrating science to create understanding, to create collaborative behavior. And this, in my view, is what the world needs today. I like to call this cycle, the science of where. It takes on special meaning, the science of where. 
what is the science of where? It's the science of geography, the interconnectedness of everything, powered with GIS technology, the digital transformation that we continue to evolve us together. This has huge consequences. It's not just about applying science to an application. It's not just about applying GIS to science, although these are both very important. It's also about a science of its own. Michael Goodchild described this as GI science in the early 90s, a famous academic. This is now getting its own legs. You, in many ways, are scientists. You are pioneering and evolving the science of where? Through your maps, through your databases, and so on. Very powerful idea. GIS itself, the technology, is getting smarter. It's not only evolving in its little pieces, this function and that function, but it's also integrating and leveraging many other technologies. And it's moving increasingly to cloud computing and to distributed computing. It's coming together as technology marches along. So what do we mean by getting smarter? First, I want to share with you a major transformation that's occurring. Perhaps you're conscious of it, perhaps you're not. It's the notion of a new architecture emerging. And this is an architecture of distributed services by each of you individuals shared through services, abstracted through technologies such as the portal, and then referenced so that I can find information, integrate information from many different sources across the web. This is very powerful. <laughs> the idea that we can read and access any database, any format, bring it together as we need it, and look at it in apps. That's the notion of infrastructure and requires fundamentally the notion of collaboration, just like, David, just like David's organization does. But magnified because the technology itself is falling into place. A second definition of smart is that real-time information is being read in from sensor networks, both in the built environment and also the natural environment. We are spatializing things in real time and bringing them into the same GIS pattern. GIS is also becoming a kind of system of engagement where we have identities which give us privileges to both share and use each other's work, sharing between individuals and their organizations and communities with a common language. GIS also is embedding more advanced analytics, and we'll see some of that this morning. Not only traditional spatial analysis, but also big data analysis and new tools for interactive exploration of spatial data patterns. Another definition of this smartness is involved in planning. GIS at the services level is revolutionizing how we design things, like this beautiful sketch of a 3D city in Singapore, and plan things. Green infrastructure planning, for example. Last year, we worked with a number of you here to bring together all the different federal GIS databases to support synoptic green infrastructure planning, not only to help the federal government's plans for green infrastructure protection, but also make that data available for regional governments or state governments or local governments or NGOs to reinforce and leverage national data sets into the actual action of our government at all levels. This new services framework, Smart GIS, integrates everything. It connects people, processes, and things. Notice here systems of records. Many of you maintain systems of record. 
with systems of engagement, identity, access, with systems of insight, data analytics. These three systems all together are helping organizations understand things and also be aware of what's changing, insightful about these patterns, and alert. These are a few examples from the federal government. On the far left, USGS in one of their citizen-facing apps. This is in California. When an earthquake happens in the north, it sends a message out to me living in the south maybe a minute before the earthquake actually hits. It's a cool little app. The one in the center is done by NOAA. Most of you know NOAA because of their rainfall forecasts, but here they're forecasting rain, dropping the rain on top of the USGS in HD, digital terrain model, running the rain through the networks and saying five or ten days out, this is when the flood's going to hit. This is really impactful. And then on the right, up in Cambridge, the citizens are able to access a proposed development across the web and give social media feedback, kind of like a town hall engagement, linking citizens to government action. These smart applications are scaling up. This is a new pattern called a community GIS. The idea is that not only are communities sharing their open data, but they're putting it into a web GIS for citizens or NGOs or startups or schools to be able to use this data and engage. A kind of new way to do civic engagement around initiatives, initiatives that are policy-driven initiatives. A number of local governments are already implementing this, one of which is Loudoun County. We'll hear about it later this morning, but also Los Angeles, Sydney, Australia, Hong Kong. They're taking their investments in government GIS and making it available for a larger group to participate and drive action. So let me summarize something here. I'm seeing new kinds of collaboration occurring not just as individuals or individuals working within their organizations, but I'm starting to see a pattern of organizations sharing services to other organizations. Like the county of Los Angeles base map is now being used by the city of Los Angeles, saving millions of dollars. National data sets are being used by states. New kinds of collaborative efforts are occurring, and this is just beginning. I like to think of this as a kind of nervous system of our nation emerging. And all of you creating the data, visualizing the data, sharing the data, building models, supporting others, peer-to-peer -peer with services, is going to emerge very rapidly. So I would conclude this section of my talk by simply saying humans have never been more capable of sharing and applying geographic data, and also understanding what it means, and also acting. So my sense is that now, particularly now, is the time to apply this science of where, to scale it up, to not only embrace our biggest challenges, and you know them better than most people, to envision what's possible in the way of solutions, to share information but also collaborate on designing new ways, whether it's in public safety or whether it's in conservation or whether it's in infrastructure planning or whether it's in whatever the field is. This is an important time because from my sense, the technology platform is here. <laughs>